best entertainment on the earth. Tune in for Comics with Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch, and I'll probably regret this, but here goes anyway. Um, again, I, I believe in fair is fair. And so when uh, Brian Michael Bendis uh, revealed, and, and really in a hacky way, I mean, it's funny for all the people who've celebrated uh, Bobby Drake being gay, they kind of gloss over the fact that uh, Gene Gray basically outed him by <laughs> reading his mind. It was not, I mean, I, I don't know, as far as, uh, you know, progressive uh, people coming out of the closet goes, having a telepath kind of rip the secret out of your head and then confront you with it feels like a really insensitive way to go. But, but whatever, water under the bridge, right? At any point, um, I'll, this sparked a huge debate, if you've been noticing in uh, in, in comics, of uh, is he truly gay or not, or why they retcon him to be gay, and, and, uh, and, and just he wasn't gay, or yes, he always was gay. And the side that was going with the signs were always there, uh, we're mainly referring to a lot of headcanon and fanfic that was written on the internet saying, I think he's gay because of kind of these vague reasons. But one of the reasons they gave, and, and now it's become kind of the poster child for why, you know, Stanley always intended Bobby Drake to be gay, comes down to one panel in X-Men number one. And the panel's on the screen now, and it basically, you've seen this before, um, Jean Grey is coming to the school, for, uh, Xavier's school, and she's, she's new. And, uh, you know, Professor X has gotten all the boys all horny about it, saying, you know, we got a girl coming. And so all the guys are at the window going, you're right, sir. Wow. She's a real living doll. By the way, it's worth noting that in these early issues of the X-Men, Professor X was harboring a pretty deep romantic you know, feelings for Jean as well. It was creepy as uh, AF, as they say. Anyway, uh, Cyclops, Angel, and Beast are leaning out the window, basically a redhead. Look at her face and the rest of her. All of a sudden, I'm in no hurry to graduate from this place, says the Beast. And then you know, Iceman is wa shown walking away and Bobby says, a girl, big deal. I'm glad I'm not a wolf like you guys. And, um, and so people have used this scene to basically say, aha, the signs are there. Um, he is, uh, he was gay all along. The, the, the problem with that is that first of all, on the exact same page that this uh, panel is in, a few, uh, a few panels down below when Jean Grey actually enters the school and meets the X-Men, all the guys are shown walking close to her and Bobby is uh, grinning like an idiot like all the others, excited to meet the girl. Um, Bobby is, uh, is then just, you know, a few pages later, um, we see Bobby leaning around the corner of a, a room saying, wowee, she looks like she was poured into that uniform. Uh, basically when Jean Grey puts on the X-Men costume for the first time. And, you know, if you read, and this, this is in the same comic, this is literally a few pages later from the panel that everyone says is definitive proof that Bobby is gay. Just a few panels later, uh, we get uh, him basically uh, super horny for Jean. And, uh, and keep in mind that during this time, Iceman has been portrayed as a, uh, you know, a, a teenager. In fact, there's several lines in there saying that he's younger than everyone else and that uh, he gets a few minutes of free play. And so he kind of dresses up like a snowman. And it's, uh, you know, they, they say you're just a 16 year old, but they basically define a lot in this comic that he is young and he's, you know, he's, he's still a little awkward around girls and that's, you know, just immature. Basically, that was his character for a long time. But again, if you read both this issue and then several issues that follow the issue two through six or so, there's plenty of scenes of Bobby being just as horny and after Gene as everyone else, including uh, one scene, uh, you know, Cyclops saves Gene and uh, Bobby says, uh, you know, gets jealous and says, uh, you know, how dare you kind of save her? Any of us would have saved you. And, uh, you know, later, uh, we get, uh, a scene of Bobby super excited and horny, uh, saying, uh, this is Marvel girls lucky day. I'm teaming up with her this time gangway. So folks, and this becomes a, a constant gag of all the guys are, uh, super into, um, you know, super into gene. Um, and it, again, it, it, it's, it's throughout, 
we see uh, Angel grab Jean to kind of fly her away at one point, and Bobby's jealous again. You know, I are you going to let this heel get away with that? I I'm, hope your pin feathers get caught in a ringer. He continuously is into uh, is into Jean Grey. So at any rate, um, it's it's the comic. This look. And I know many of you are going to disagree with this statement. Look, if you want to change the character, if you want to reveal this new personality, if you want to say that all these years he was closeted and just kind of ignoring these feelings, fine. Again, you're you're welcome to do it, but there is a lot of continuity to deal with. And and so whenever I see somebody sharing just that one panel, it's incredibly disingenuous when two pa- you know just just a couple pages later. And including even a scene in that same page. Now you can say a grin didn't mean anything, but just a few pages later, um, you get him clearly have the hots for Gene. So, you know, again, if you want to say that things changed, a new facet of the character is revealed, whatever you want to do, be my guest. But you can't show one panel and then ignore a panel a couple pages later. Let alone the history. I mean, so so you know, Iceman uh, had a girlfriend Zelda early on in. Uh, in the, in the comics, he, uh, he pretty famously would kind of flirt with a bunch of girls when he was in the champions and then in X factor in particular, and this is the one that I think really never gets addressed. Uh, he got into a relationship with Opal, uh, Opal Tanaka, and this led to a, you know, a multi-issue storyline where the Yakuza comes after Opal and Bobby basically risks his life to save her. And they very much, you know, go all in that he's, you know, this is his girl. Um, a few issues later, or not a few issues, sorry, several uh, <laughs> issues later, uh, they then do a bit where Opal or Bobby's parents are racist and they they uh, uh, harass Opal and, um, and then uh, the relationship deteriorates. But then they come back to it uh, many issues later where a part of kind of saving uh, Iceman's life when he is uh, grievously, grievously injured um, is, you know, they, they, they do this bit where he has this kind of dream sequence involving Opal that he has to work through, uh, with Emma and that he needs to, uh, kind of gain more control over it. So they, it, they, they let alone, um, they have the whole, and, and granted, I understand why people, people memory hold this cause it was largely terrible writing. There was the whole bit where, um, uh, Iceman Bobby, they reveal that he had a crush on, on, uh, Polaris that he was really into her. And then they had that, that weird little love triangle square where he started dating nurse Annie. Um, but nurse Annie was in love with havoc. And then this is, you know, this, there's a whole thing there. So I think there's enough history in all of this stuff, including kind of the weird, uh, they, they briefly had a, a moment where he was, he was kind of into mystique and he kissed her. And, and, uh, anyway, there's, there's a bunch of, of, of pieces in here where he's clearly uh, into women or he's, he's, you know, acting pretty, (laughs) he's really deep, um, in the closet at this point. So again, if you want to, uh, you know, uh, kind of reveal that this was all an act, I think there's things you can do. You can certainly say that several of these relationships are super toxic and that's why they were bad and that's why they deteriorate. I mean, you can make a story there, but in the sole purposes video, if you see that one single panel, Okay, then (laughs) what do you, if you see that one panel, it's again, it's, it's super disingenuous. It's, uh, it, it, it ignores other things in that same comic. So next time somebody says to you, well, Stan Lee always intended him for, you know, intended Bobby to be gay. Just say, Hey, you know, uh, three pages later, Bobby is uh, clearly got a boner for Gene, uh, like all the other X-Men, including professor X, which is weird. So you know, I don't think that one panel proves anything and we're going to have to do the hard work, which means telling the actual story of what happens here. So anyway, for what it's worth, fair is fair. Uh, my main beef here is that, you know, that one panel gets shown a couple pages later, kind of the opposite is shown. It's very clear. Bobby's being written to be immature, not like some deep fake thing that's going to play out over 60 years. So anyway, there you go. That's all. Thanks for listening. <laughs>